Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the construction of a deterministic finite automata for a language over the alphabet zero comma one. So it is a binary string, and whenever the binary string is divisible by five, we have to accept it. So what does that mean? We take a binary string, and its equal and decimal should be divisible by five. And one shortcut for these kind of category is like we have to find all possible remainder when you are dividing a number by five. When I divide a number by five, what all the possible remainders I'm going to get? I'll get the remainder as either zero, one, two, three, or four. When you get five, again when you are dividing five by five, your remainder is going to be zero. Again one, two, three, four. So your remainder will be either zero, one, two, three, or four. You don't get a five or six. Okay, since again it is a reminder. Okay, so reminder will be either into this category, either zero, one, two, three, or four. So what we do, we take all possible reminders when you are dividing a number by any. It need not to be five. Whatever might might be the number that you are uh, going to check for, you have to find all possible reminder and create a state for all the reminders. Okay, so when I am dividing a number by five, I get the reminder as either zero. Or one, or two, or three, or four. These four are the possible reminder where I can lead into when I am dividing a number by five. Now the states are defined. When I get the reminder as zero, what is the meaning of it? When I get a reminder zero by dividing a number by five, it means it is perfectly divisible, right? So I am just going to make this as a final state. Okay, this is the place where I am where I'm going to start, and this is going to be the final state too. Since I get a zero only when the number is perfectly divisible by five. Okay, so I'm just going to make the number uh, make that zero state as final state. I can uh, for simplicity, I can just make the states as Q naught, Q one, Q two, Q three, and Q four. Now. The states are done. Starting state, final state is defined. What is left? We have to find the transition, and it is a deterministic finite item automata. From each and every state on each and every possible input, we have a transition, right? We have to have a transition. Now your input is of the combination zero and one, so we have to verify what happen if a zero occurs in a state and what happen if a one occurs in the state. So we'll start from the starting state. So starting state is the place where we haven't processed any of the input, right? If you get a zero, so any Zeros in this Q naught, it means that the remainder is going to be zero, right? In the starting, if you get a input as zero, dividing zero by five, you get the remainder as zero again. Okay, so I'm just going to have a self loop for it. Now the next input I'm going to get it is we have to verify Q naught when the input is one. So Q naught when the input is one, the input that you're going to take here is binary. Anyway, for one, the binary equivalent is also one. So when the input is one, when you are dividing one by five, what will be the remainder you're going to get? It is again one, right? So when you are dividing one by five, the remainder you're going to get is also five one. Okay. So when the input is one, it leads into the remainder as one. So I'm going to have the transition from Q naught when the input is one. I'm going to Q one state remainder one. Okay. Now Q naught when the input is one and zero, we have defined the transition. We'll take the next step. Uh, we'll start with the state Q one. So Q one is reachable. See, whenever you process an input, the processing actually starts from the starting state on. To reach Q one, this is the only path I have, and the input is one. At least I take one to reach from Q naught to Q one. The minimum input taken to reach Q one is one. Okay, when we when your input consists of a one, I am able to reach this Q one, and from Q one, I have to find what happen if a zero occurs, what happen if a one occurs. Okay, so we have to find all possible transition on all the inputs. So input is of the combination zero one. So I'm going to verify what happen if a zero occurs, what happen if a one occurs. Okay, so what is this equivalent decimal number? One zero is two, one one is three. When you are dividing it by four, what remainder you are going to get it here? You get the remainder as two. When you are dividing it by four, you get the remainder as three. Okay, so here when the input is zero in Q one, it generates the remainder as two. In Q one, if the input is zero, 
it generates remainder as 2 we are making a transition to q2 state in q1 if the input is 1 it generates the remainder as 3 so in q1 if the input is 1 1 1 the remainder will be 3 1 0 is 2 and the remainder is 2 again okay so this is how we find a transition now q1 we found the transition q0 we found the transition we have to take what happen if there is if you are in this q2 state we have to find all possible transition from each and every state now q2 is a place i'll be reaching like when i want to reach q2 this is the only path i take from the starting state the minimal path taken to reach from q0 to q2 is through q1 the input is at least i just have a one followed by two to reach this q2 state in q0 if the input is one it goes to q1 in q1 if the input is zero it goes to q2 so to reach q2 the path taken is this the minimum path taken is this and that is through the input one zero so one zero is the mandatory input that is needed to reach from q0 to q2 the processing of input always starts from q0 okay so this is the minimum input taken to reach q2 now we have to check what happen if a zero occurs or what happen if a one occurs in this state so what is this equivalent of your um, decimal number it's 4 when you are dividing 4 by 5 what is the remainder you get here it is 4 1 0 1 is 5 when you are dividing this by 5 your remainder is 0 right 1 0 1 is 5 and when you are dividing 5 by 5 your remainder is 0 so when the input taken here is 0 in q2 if a 0 occurs it generates a reminder as 4 in q2 if a 0 occurs it generates the reminder as 4 in q2 if a 1 occurs it generates the reminder as 0 again in q2 if i have a 0 i'm just going to going back to the state q0 okay so that's that is done sorry if the input is 1 q2 on 0 it goes to q4 q2 on 0 it goes to q4 q2 on 1 it goes to q0 done okay so q0 on 0 when we found the transition q1 on 0 1 q2 on 0 1 it is done similarly we have to complete the transition for the remaining states too so let us take the next state what is your next state next state is q3 and what is the minimum input taken to reach q3 here from transition always starts from the starting state from q0 this is the only path i have to reach q3 the minimum path taken to reach q3 and the input is through 1 followed by 1 so at least it takes a 1 1 to reach q3 okay so 1 1 is a mandatory constraint to reach q3 and in q3 you, you have to find the transition on what happened if a 0 occurs, what happened if a 1 occurs. Since this is a DFA, from each and every state on each and every possible inputs, we should have a transition. So, we have to verify what happened if a 0 comes, what happened if a 1 comes here. Okay. So, the binary equivalent of it is 6 and 7. When you are dividing this by 4, what is the reminder you are going to get here? Sorry, 5. You are going to divide the number by 5. When you are dividing 6 by 5, the remainder is 1. When you are dividing 7 by 5, the remainder is 2. Okay. So now, Q0, sorry, Q3, when the input is 0, it generates the remainder as 1. So I can just draw 3 to 1 when the input is 0. So Q3, when the input is 0, it generates the remainder as 1. And in Q3, if the remainder is 1, it generates the remainder as 2. Q3, when the input is 1, it generates the remainder as 2. So, we are going to all the states of the remainder function. When whatever remainder it generates, we are going to take the transition to that place. Okay. So, Q3, when the input is 1, it generates the remainder as 2. I am just making this transition here okay now q0 q1 q2 q3 on input 0 1 we found the transition what is left the last state that you want to find the transition for input on 0 1 is q4 state let us take the state q4 and what does this q4 means what is the minimum input taken to reach q4 q4 
q0 q1 to q2 to q4 it is 1 0 0 so 1 0 0 is the minimum input taken to reach to the state q4 and we have to verify what happen if a zero occurs here what happen if a one occurs here okay so what happen if a zero occurs here what is its equivalent function it is 8 and this is 9 and uh, when you are dividing this 8 by 5 your remainder is 3 9 by 5 your remainder is 4 right in q4 if your input is 0 it generates the remainder as 3 q4 on 0 it generates the remainder as 3 and q4 when the input is 1 it generates the remainder as 1 so i'm just going to make a self loop here on 1 now this is done so this is how the transition works for a dfa from each and every state on each and every input symbol we found the transition now uh, all the states are the remainder function and whenever you have this place ending to somewhere you are going to verify what is the input to the system okay so uh, like when i take what happen if a one occurs what happen in a if a zero occurs we convert that into a decimal we check what remainder it generates and we make the transition in such a way that it leads to the same remainder function now the dfa is done what is the next step we have to go ahead with the verification process of it so we have to check whether the inputs we have verified till 9 right we have to take something other than this and check whether the input is accepted or not i'll take one example of i take 10 1010 is 10 11 11 one, one. so this is divisible by 5 and this is not divisible by 5 i will verify whether it is properly defined or not so i'll start from the straight q not i take the input as 1010 1010 and check where your dfa leads to so q not on one input as one where it goes it goes to q1 and the remaining input is 1010 uh, this is the remaining input right now q1 on one where it goes q1 on one it goes to q3 sorry q1 on zero i'm sorry q1 on zero where it goes it goes to q2 and the remaining input is 10 now q2 on 1 it goes to q0 and the remaining input is 0 now q0 on 0 it stays in q0 itself so 1010 1010 equivalent is 10 and 10 is perfectly divisible by 5 the remainder it generates is 0 hence q0 is your final state it is acceptable okay so this is how the transition is verified start from the starting state take one input at a time and check whether we are able to reach to the final state final accepting state at the end of your input okay so when i have taken the input as 10 and that is perfectly divisible by 5 i am into the q not state which shows that remainder is zero accepting criteria the input is accepted i'll take the next example q not on 1010 So Q not on one where it goes, it goes to Q one. The remaining input is one zero one. Sorry, uh, this is eight. I have taken. I have to. Oh, so this is eleven. For eleven, this is your uh, binary equivalent. So Q not on one, it goes to Q one. Q one on zero where it goes, Q one when the input is zero, it goes to Q two, and Q two the remaining input is one one. Q two on one where it goes. Q two on one, it goes back to Q not state, and the remainder is one. And Q not on one where it goes. Q not when the input is one, it goes to Q one state. So Q one means the remainder is one. When the remainder is one, the number is not divisible by. Five, right? So when hence it is not acceptable. Q one, Q one is not a final state. Only Q not is the final state. When the remainder is zero, that is final state. In all the remaining places, it is non-final state. So after processing all the input symbol, the transition is in non-final state. Hence the input is accepted. When you are processing input, always it leads to the place where the remainder of the digit comes. When I am dividing eleven by five, the remainder is one. So I will be in Q one state. When I take twelve, it will reach to Q two state. Okay, and that is also non-final. We are going to reject it. Okay, so this is how the transition works. Whenever it is a string, binary string divisible by any number, you have to take all possible remainder, construct a state, and check for what happen if a zero occurs, what happen if a one occurs in each and every state. So that is the uh, shortcut to solve these kind of problems. Okay, thank you.